The case between Ripple and SEC is not something new but, is Ripple XRP still a good investment after such a price jump and the SEC cloud hanging over it? What could happen to the price of XRP? Stay tuned till the end of the video to know more about XRP updates. But first, we are giving away $25 at the end of the month to one random subscriber to start their XRP journey. All you need to do is like the video, subscribe, and comment on your thoughts on XRP in the comments section. Welcome back to XRP Army. Let's grow the XRP Lab community by pressing the like button and subscribe. So friends, over the past couple of days on Twitter, we see absolute confusion. We can see Brain Quintens, who is currently the chairman of the FTC, has posted a tweet stating that, just so that we are clear here, the SEC has no authority over pure commodities or their trading venues, whether those commodities are wheat, gold, oil or crypto assets. We see a slight conflict between the SEC and Commodity Futures Trading Commission as to who will get to regulate the crypto space. It clearly shows the incompetence of both the commissions. We initially thought that Gary Gensler, the chairman of the SEC, would be more beneficial to crypto by all possible approaches. Still, after seeing all the interviews he has been on, dear friends, it seems like he has no clear idea how things are to be handled, he is lying straight to the people pretending as if he is not aware of the current issue. Next, we see Anya Manuel, director at Ripple. She is co-founder and partner in the former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. Needless to say that she is a powerhouse, and she was questioning Gary Gensler at the current state of the crypto market. Her mode of placing questions was great, and the way Gary Gensler answered those questions caught a vast amount of people's attention to the interview. Anya Manuel's first question to Gary Gensler was that she stated that Gary in one of his speeches commented that the probability is that with 50 plus tokens, most of them are securities, and the main concern is that how do we know which one is security and which one is not? Why are Ethereum and Bitcoin treated with an exception, and how is that considered appropriate as many people still believe Ethereum was an ICO? Is this regulation to be implemented through a litigation process that is currently happening? Or will there be any clear criteria published so that the people in the market will know if they are issuing security or if any of the cryptos has become an actual currency or any form of a commodity because it has an actual usage? To this well-structured question, Gary Gensler's response is as follows. Both Jay Clayton, a catalyst for that SEC Ripple lawsuit and Gary Gensler himself have cases. So, guys, we can see the director of the Ripple asking for clarity on Bitcoin and Ethereum and especially clarity on Ether because it did run on ICO and yet why was it given the exception and others being treated differently? The question by Anya Manuel was straightforward as to, would it be regulated by some sort of litigation or some leeway? And we can witness that Gary Gensler is incompetent to give answers and is a lying bureaucrat. It's a massive wonder as to how can a person be so casual about the future of the United States economic growth infrastructure considering that the US is the most indebted nation on the planet and the value of the currency is falling day by day. It is visible that Gary as a regulator is failing. After hearing these statements from Gary, the CEO of Ripple, Bradley Kent Garlinghouse stated that it is evident that China has been extremely strategic on this point as have started years ago and the US is very late already, and the US's engagement as we've heard is not so far supporting. The US internet information as we know it today is part thrived because there was that regulatory clarity, but on the other hand over here we are doing the opposite here a massive new industry that would be the future not just around payments in which Ripple primarily works today but more broadly than that. But if the US authorities don't address this problem properly, there won't be any further improvements, and we would fall behind. From Bradley's words, it is clear that we need clarity, and it is shocking that Gary is trying to do this. The reason is that Gary himself has stated in the past that he was against it. Please know that the world is going towards a digital CBDC cashless society. China's ahead, the US is behind, and we have to catch up to the technologies there, and the regulators need to hurry it up soon, and we all need clarity and Gary has not been providing any form of information. It is always safe to have some cash in hand due to some corrections or due to SEC regulations, or due to some enforcement of exchanges, or enforcement of tether, which would weed out all the scams and the non-compliance and then after which they will bring up a framework to which everyone will be forced to comply and get a regulatory clarity then the compliant cryptocurrencies will surely have the upper hand and would quickly take over the entire planet. Here is a strategy for you all. Just in case this correction happens, be ready to buy the dip and if it does happen then continue the journey all the way up as it would ultimately lead you to win. Now we see that the regulation is at the forefront of the crypto space's mind, 
Brian Armstrong talking about the infrastructure bill in the US and the effects it would have on the cryptos. The affidavit in the court says the SEC hasn't taken a stance, and they are losing the case and it's not good for them, but it's excellent for Ripple. The new bill would force the US-based crypto companies to share the pieces of information with the internal revenue services that the IRS doesn't have access to now, and these companies would be left out with no other options. In such a case, they would either move outside the premises of the US where the bill shall not be applicable, or would most likely shut down. By all means, it looks like the Congress government is trying to play the game smartly, that is if they are in need of more money, they are just trying to spread the net wider to have more companies pay more tax to the government so that their tax revenue can increase to more than $28 billion. As per recent XRP price predictions and its price movement, XRP began the year at $0.22 cents in, on April 15th, reached $1.84. According to CoinGecko's data, XRP currently trades at $0.961 as of the recording of this video on August 13, with a 24-hour trading volume of $3,471,622,400. The current coin market cap ranking is number 6, with a live market cap of $37,646,052,595. It is also to be noted that only 46% of the total coins are in circulation. It might mark a tremendous improvement by the end of the year, unlike other major coins, and cross its previous all-time high price of $3.84, unlike other major currencies such as Ethereum and Bitcoin. The price of Ripple, XRP, could reach $4 in 2023, which would be a new record. The crypto space is under threat. This uncharted territory is under big question as to who would regulate it and provision regarding this is being inserted into bills, and this would bring more progress in the crypto space than ever before. The short term with the implementation of this new system will be volatile, but on the long, the term will be systematic and beyond life-changing. We would advise you to pay close attention to Gary's clips so that you all will understand his perspective and be prepared to face anything that may happen in crypto space. With that, we have come to the end of this video. If you want to continue knowing about XRP, we have two videos waiting for you on the end screen to check out. Make sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. And on a final note, be aware that the prices of cryptocurrencies frequently change, so by the time you watch this video, it might have changed to a whole new value. The information provided in this video does not constitute investment advice, financial advice, trading advice, or any other sort of advice, and you should not treat any of the content as such. The content in this video is for educational purposes only and hence should not be considered financial advice. Do conduct your own due diligence and consult your financial advisor before making any investment decisions.